and Drew Soysher Sports. Ken Griffey Jr. made Major League history tonight by drilling the eight ball right in the corner pocket. A Major League record tying eighth consecutive game with a home run. The Everett Giants have no plans to install an electronic scoreboard. And that's good news, because I kind of like this one. Well, it only makes sense that a golf tournament played in Sandwich, England, would have two leaders stuck together after three rounds like peanut butter and jelly. Mr. Trash does more than just clean up the ballpark. He also provides entertainment between innings with a juggling act. My mic's on fire. <laughs> Myra, Myra on the wall. Who's the richest of them all? Why, it's you, of course. Quarterback Rick Myra. 42 years later, it's basically the same machine. Only the characters in the driver's seat have changed. Mariner's first round draft pick, Alex Rodriguez, has been quoted as saying the Mariners are a low class organization which disrespected his mother. If this were the love connection, Chuck Woolery would be asking the studio audience to pick a new date. The NCAA has a rule requiring that every school keep at least one backboard in storage just in case. The UW has a whole bunch of them, so dunk all you want. We'll make more. In what could be the worst trade of all time, the Oakland A's have sent future Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson to the Blue Jays for a couple of guys who most teams wouldn't trade Florence Henderson for. But a young fan leaned over the dugout and told the security guard that he had dropped his glove. It worked. I'm Drew Soysher, hanging out on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Grandma Golf has a really unusual scoring system. In addition to the overall champ, a special title is handed out called the Go-Go Granny. And quarterback Dan McGuire has a sore middle finger on his right hand. I'd love to show you what I mean, but those of you watching with the volume turned down might not be so understanding. Mariners and Twins tonight, game time 7.05. You think Griffey can do it? He thinks so. We're live at the Kingdom. I'm Drew Soysher. He's the Moose. Drew Soysher stands by live. And Drew, I'm wondering, are you going to show us that Grand Slam by Ken Griffey just one more time, please? You bet. Maybe even two more times. You know, if this were a TV show, the title would be Eight is Enough. If Griffey can run his home run streak to eight tonight, it will be enough to tie the all-time record. Last night, Griffey became only the third man in Major League Baseball history to hit at least one home run in seven straight games. And he did it with the bases loaded. Junior sends a high five ball, Belton, deep to center field. It is Grand Salami time. It's Griffey's fifth career Grand Slam, and it landed right in seventh heaven. Get two more now in the next two days, and uh, I don't want to put any pressure on him whatsoever. But uh, he's come this far. Let's break a record that's been in the record books for a long time, hopefully. Standing in the way between Ken Griffey Jr. and baseball immortality is Twins pitcher Willie Banks. I mean, I can't worry about that. I got to worry about more than that Ken Griffey. I mean, you know, he's got a good streak going, but... Yeah, you know, my job's out there to get him out. He's only the third guy to do it in seven. So I mean, he's he's in very uh very good company, man, with Don Manley and another guy, whatever his name is. <laughs> his name is Dale Long, 1956 Pirates. Until this week, Griffey had never even heard of Dale Long. But with one swing tonight, their names could be side by side in the record book. Almost completely overshadowed during Griffey's home run streak has been Griffey's other streak for defense. Junior extended his American League record for consecutive chances without an error to 559 last night with a great diving catch. He needs only 10 more to break the Major League record held by Kurt Flood. What a player. All right, with a new number on his back and old numbers in his contract, Cortez Kennedy returned to the football field today. Lean shaven and ready to go. Cortez Kennedy joins his teammates six days late at training camp. Kennedy has decided to change his uniform number back to 96, from 99, which he wore for one season. Cortez still hasn't had his contract renegotiated, as he requested, but he's more interested in catching up with his teammates on the football field and in the training camp dorm rooms. I went to sleep pretty early last night. I was real tired, but I messed with a couple guys. They, they was hollering my names last night, but hopefully we can get it going in a couple more days once I get in the groove and, and everything. An autopsy was conducted today on former Boston Celtics star Reggie Lewis, but no cause of death was determined pending further study. Reggie Lewis collapsed and died on Tuesday, just three months after collapsing because of heart problems during an NBA playoff game. 
At that time, Celtics team doctors recommended that Lewis retire. But Lewis sought a second opinion and got one. He found a doctor that said Lewis could resume his basketball career under strict medical supervision. But yesterday, while shooting baskets at the team's practice facility near Boston, Lewis collapsed again and died. And this time, tragically, there is no second opinion. Reggie Lewis was obviously an outstanding basketball player, but Reggie Lewis was an outstanding human being. A gentle, kind, wonderful, considerate guy who just had so much to give to the city of Boston. Just one day before he died, Reggie Lewis found out that his wife was pregnant with the couple's second child. Ken Griffey Jr. takes a swing at the record books tonight. Game time is 7.05. We're live at the Kingdome. I'm Drew Soysher.